Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity may contain explicit and questionable content. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual podcaster and are not based on the advice of a licensed psychologist, therapist, or a psychiatrist. Listener discretion is strongly recommended. Human lives follow many paths, presenting twists and turns and choices never planned nor expected. Temptation, anger, depression, and loneliness all can lead a person to make a decision that cannot be reversed. Facing judgment and isolation, a person can feel very alone. These are the voices of women who have chosen to cheat on their spouses or partners. Hear their stories. This is Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity. An anonymous and no judgment podcast created and hosted by me, Rebecca Adams. I was an unfaithful wife. You are not alone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. This is Rebecca. Hope you have all been well today. I had a great weekend, went to a Scottish festival, heard some amazing music had a lot of fun. We took our RV out for the first time and kind of took it on its maiden voyage. And we have to be prepared considering we're going to have to be living in it for about a year while we wait for our house. Um, And so, yeah, that was fun. I didn't want to come back home because there's so much work here with packing and all of that for this move that seems like it's never going to come. But I know it's out there. It'll happen. We're just still waiting on some construction. So today we're going to start a new story from Brandy. And just a couple of things. Brandy is from Australia. And there were a couple of places um, that she mentioned on here. And I was trying to do the best I could phonetically to get the names of these specific towns and understanding because the way um, they do things or say things or the way their cities are set up may be different than how we do it here in the U.S. So if I screw up, on words, well, that's just what happens when you have somebody from the U.S. trying to speak Australian common things. <laughs> I even reached out to a couple of people who were uh, from Australia, my listeners, and some of them hadn't even heard of the town and they weren't going to try and help me because they were afraid they would butcher it worse than me. You guys know who you are and thank you so much for trying to help. I appreciate it. There was um, a situation with the story. There was a couple of questions actually that I had for her and I haven't been able to reach her to confirm a couple of things. So there may be a hole here or there that you don't have the answer to. And we're just going to have to kind of go with that. Um, But uh, aside from that, it's a very sad, sad, sad story. And it was really, really hard for me just typing it out to be able to, you know, have it so I can read it here to record. And for those of you who have been longtime followers, will understand why uh, when we get to that part of the story. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started with Brandy's story. I can still remember the first time I met Mark. I was 16 years old and I was living in a hostel in the city. I had become friends with a girl named Michelle who introduced me to her sister Lucy. At that time, Lucy was Mark's girlfriend and they were expecting their first child. I can still remember him telling me in a private conversation that he wished we had met sooner. Mark and I went for a drive one evening while the sisters were somewhere else. It was magical, just sitting together and looking at the stars. It was at that moment when he told me that we should have been together. I saw him only a few times after that moment, but I was young and I still had so many things that I wanted to do. At age 18, I got married. As time went on, I learned my husband was not the man that I thought he was and never imagined my life would be like this. He was a violent man in general, but when he drank alcohol, it was terrifying. I was hospitalized on a few occasions and went into refugee status for protection 
and was told he wouldn't be able to find me. But he did. The courts were pathetic. He would only get a good behavior bond. In the Australian legal system, a good behavior bond is a type of non-custodial sentence which involves the condition of the offender's, quote, good behavior for a set period. One judge said that I wasn't allowed to take his children from him as it was Christmas time and I was planning to go live with my mom and take the children with me. The judge stated that because he didn't hurt the children, I wasn't allowed to take them away from him. Both my mom and I were horrified. He had not only broken my cheekbone, but he broke my nose and some of my ribs. Also, my body was covered in bruises. Let's go back. We had just had our first daughter, and my husband Robert agreed to go out to dinner at Blacktown RSL. While there, I saw Mark. He was wearing a white suit and looked gorgeous. I couldn't believe it was him. We couldn't talk, as Robert wouldn't allow me to talk to anyone without his permission, so as the night ended, we went our separate ways. It was a few years later when Robert said, let's go visit Mark and Lucy. At this point in our lives, we both have three kids, and my husband has become a violent, abusive drunk. When we got to their home, Mark and I looked at each other and he asked me if I wanted a cone. A cone is a joint that starts small at the crutch or inhaling end and widens out to the tip. Well, being a weed smoker myself, I said yes. Perfect, I thought, as we didn't smoke in front of the kids. We went into the laundry room and shut the door. He grabbed me and kissed me. That was the start of our affair. Mark was the man that was the love of my life. Our affair lasted longer than my marriage. I only ever had one affair, only with Mark. However, my husband would accuse me of sleeping with any male that came to visit. He would say degrading things to family members about me. He would tell me things such as I'm fat and ugly and that I don't know how to be a good mom and no one would ever want me. At that time, my husband and I were living in Rudy Hill, but we had to move at the end of the lease. I was determined to live closer to Mark. I knew it would be so much easier to see him. I found a house literally just around the corner. And at this point, Robert was becoming more violent as he had started drinking. Every chance we could get to be alone, we took advantage of it. I was in love with Mark. I would do anything to get time to be alone with him. I would even get Robert so drunk that he would pass out even though I knew he could go off at any second and start beating me. But when Mark was there, he never once hit me. I was so unhappy in my marriage. I only wanted to be with Mark. But back then, I thought I couldn't make it on my own. So I just kept trying to get any time I could with him. One night, Robert went on a rampage. He hurt me badly, and he tried to run me over and kill me. We were moved out to the country for my own safety, not that it mattered. Robert found us in a few days. I was terrified to go with him, but we all went back to the city. Mark... He would call me every morning on his way to work to tell me I was beautiful and that he loved me. At this time, Robert was working the night shift, so we had so much time to be together. I was happy. I had the man of my dreams. About six years later, I became pregnant. I knew it was Mark's baby. I told Mark that I was pregnant, and he asked me if it was his, and of course I told him the truth. It was his. He was so confused, just as I was. So with all of this added stress, I ended up going into labor one month early. She was beautiful. A beautiful, healthy baby girl. Mark and I made this beautiful little soul. Our affair continued with stolen kisses and nights together. 
I would always tell him that I never wanted this to end. Well, Robert decided he would buy a house out in the bush. I was devastated. It was in the New South Wales countryside in Australia's little town called Weathali, which is about 110 kilometers or 68 miles from the nearest big town, Griffith, New South Wales. How would I ever get to see him living six hours away? Well, it came time to tell Mark that I was leaving. The following night, he begged me to stay, but I had to leave. I had no choice. Over the next 10 years, the phone calls never stopped. I still wanted him and I never stopped loving him. Eventually, we moved back to Sydney and Mark called me to tell me that he had left Lucy and asked if I would like to see him after all these years. Hell yes, I did, and I was so excited. It was like we had never been apart. I was happy and had decided it was time to leave Robert, so I did. We kept our relationship quiet, but after being hidden for so long, we couldn't keep back and we told everyone. We felt as though we were in heaven. I had it all. The man of my dreams, the love of my life, and I was so happy. We were never apart for the next four years of our life, and it felt magical. He loved me so much. He showed me how life was supposed to be. He showed me that I could wear nice clothes, get my hair and nails done, things that I was never allowed to do with Robert. We spent weekends away, either camping or in motels. We would even spend weekends at his parents' house. I loved his mom and dad. Mark and I were truly in love. Then, Mark got sick. He had a toe amputated and then another one. I thought he was going to be okay. People lose limbs and still live. Twelve months after he lost both toes, he told me he was dying. He said he didn't want me to be upset, so he was going to leave me so that I could find somebody else. I begged him to tell me the truth, and again, he said he was dying. I still didn't believe him. I couldn't believe him. I was devastated. The love of my life didn't want to be with me anymore, so I thought... Even though we weren't officially together, Mark would still call me every day just to see how I was doing. I was so confused. I thought if he didn't want to be with me, then why was he making sure if I was okay? This went on for three months, and then one day I decided to no longer answer the calls anymore. It was literally killing me to not be with him. Before I knew it, there was a knock on the door. It was Mark. He just held me in his arms and waited until I stopped crying and said, I love you, Brandy. Please don't ever think I don't, which made me cry again. I asked him, then why don't you want me? He said he loved me and that we would get back together. We were planning a trip to visit Kakadu National Park. It was a Monday and Mark's birthday was the following day. I thought to myself, well, I will call him and wish him a happy birthday and give him his present. But at this point, I was wondering why he had not called me yet that day, like he had for the previous 27 years. The next day arrived, his birthday, and I tried to call him to see what time he was picking me up. There was no answer. I was so upset thinking he just didn't want to go. I went to bed that night knowing something was wrong, but put it to the back of my mind. The next day, it was Wednesday, his daughter Steph told me that he had passed away. My whole world fell apart and is still since that day. At his funeral, I wasn't allowed to say goodbye. I had to sit alone at the back of the crematorium by myself. All I could do is think is, no, it can't be him. They are all lying to me. 
I have no idea whatever happened to his ashes or what even caused him to die. He did say at one point his liver wasn't working properly. As I write the story, it has been two years since his passing. I wish every day that I could be with him. You see, I still love him so much that every day I have to pretend that I'm okay when I'm not. Act like I'm happy when I'm not. Pretend that I can live without him when I don't want to. Many people say with time, it gets easier. No, it doesn't. I still wear the promise ring he bought me all those years ago. Still, to this day, no one knows that Mark is Megan's dad. Thank you, Brandy, for sending your story. And I imagine it has been so hard for you and then to write this out for the show. That probably took a lot of strength and courage. But at the same time, I hope it was helpful. Sometimes writing things out can be cathartic like that. Just know that I will be thinking of you always, you know, and and honest with other people and and I shared this with you Brandy on um, a message that it was definitely hard for me to do this story Um, normally when I get emotional in stories I'm feeling the pain from the infidelity when the woman is uh, going through those remorseful feelings and hurting or the husband that was hurt is saying really horrible things to her and it just brings back those memories but this one is different. When you lose somebody like that in your life, in this situation, this was just too relatable. And like I said, those who have been following me for a long time know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you again, Brandy, for submitting your story. Please keep in touch. And we're all thinking of you and wishing you well. Okay, I had to take a little break for recording on that one. It was a little emotional. Just a few things here, though, before we wrap it up today, is there will be no Let's Ponder on October 16th. Why, you ask? If you were asking, I'm going to Disneyland. And rather than trying to cram everything in and getting everything done between the move and all the episodes and, you know traveling which was booked back in February and we weren't expecting to be moving at the same time I had to let something go and I figured you know what I am typically here week after week and I think one week would be okay if I didn't have a let's ponder episode that everybody will survive (laughs) Um, so we will be back on October 23rd with a new female infidelity story about Lucy Just a reminder that I'm looking for little short stories regarding fighting over sex. If you and your spouse fight over sex nonstop, what's the reasons? Did you used to and now it's better? What did you use for a solution? How's that going? And then also, the one that got away. Did you ever reconcile? Not reconcile. That's not the word. Uh, Reunite. (laughs) Did you ever reunite with that person? Even if it wasn't for... A relationship purpose but just you know class reunion or found them on Facebook or la 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 I want to hear your stories I've had some great ones come in I'm always looking for a little bit more though so if you have something please shoot it my way through Facebook Messenger or uh, email it um, all that information will be on the episode notes as to how to reach me and that is it oh and I'm still always accepting stories from both men and women regarding female infidelity women when they come forward and share as to why they decided to step out of their relationship of what was going on in their marriage and then also the men and how they found out that their spouse was being unfaithful or partner and how it affected them and what happened ultimately so please I can send you a story guide just shoot me an email or you can find it on my website Um, You can email your story to me. You can send it to me verbally through Messenger or through email, just recording your own voice on your phone and 
emailing it over. I will transcribe it and you will still be anonymous. The only person that hears your voice is me and uh, no one else will be able to get a hold of that. It'll all be anonymous with your name, just as I always do. So I think that is it. I will say have a great week. I'll be back October 23rd. Take care and thank you for being here today. On Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity, I share stories of women who have been unfaithful to their spouse or partner. I give them a safe space to be able to explain what happened and why they chose the direction of infidelity. I also feel it is just as important to understand what the betrayed husband or partner faced when they uncovered the truth. The affirmations he was giving her swept her away. He was young, good-looking, and interested in her. She took the bait. He would come over first for the coffee, then a beer for him and wine for her, until he felt so comfortable that he went in for a kiss. They slept together the first time that day. The rest of the story here was confessed over many days and hours of interrogation. She swore to herself that this was a one-time thing and she would take it to her grave. I probably could have lived with a one-time mistake, but that's not what happened. He started coming around every day and every day they would have unprotected sex in our bed. He had her doing anal sex, which we never did as she didn't like it. He made good on his boast that he could get the housewives to do anything he wanted and that they had more anal sex in a few weeks than we had in 25 years of our marriage. To hear bonus stories of the men's discovery of female infidelity in their relationship and have early access to regular episodes ad-free, subscribe to my Patreon by visiting my website, rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com. Subscription pledges start as low as $3 a month. Thank you for listening to Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. Your support of the podcast is truly appreciated. Be sure to visit my website at rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com. There, you will find story guides to help form your story where you can subscribe to Patreon and an opportunity to vote for the podcast to be in the Hot 50 Countdown for Podcast Magazine. To submit your story, share feedback about the show, or if you have a Let's Ponder suggestion, please email it to rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com. Each story is taken into careful consideration, read without judgment, and always anonymous. Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is written, produced, and edited by me, Rebecca Adams. If you enjoy this podcast, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Be kind to one another, be kind to yourself, and always remember, no judgment. Goodbye. Goodbye.